Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, come on, open your mouths and give him glory. Is he worthy in this place on this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you all for tuning in wherever you are, wherever you may be. We thank you for those who are in the house warming with your spirit and your presence. God, we just thank you for being here this morning. We thank you for tuning in. There is still time to get here. We are in the Jones buildings off of Independence Boulevard. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. I'm going to do something different this morning. For those of you who are in-house, even for those who are watching at home, I want you to, I know you didn't spoke to each other this morning. I want you to go across and touch and, and, and fist bump and elbow bump with at least three people and tell them, God bless you and I love you. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. At least three people. Come on, go across the aisles if you need to. Socially distance and give them a fist bump or elbow bump and tell them God bless you and I love you. Amen. Can we get the monitor on in the back here? The, the monitor on in the back here. Amen. 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 Even at home, we know that you've already spoken to your loved ones, but go ahead and embrace them and tell them God bless you and I love you. Tell them it's good to worship with you this morning. It is good to worship with you on this morning. Hallelujah, God, you're worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised, God. Oh, Lord, we thank you for another Sunday morning, another opportunity to rise and shine and give God the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on now, let's give God a hand praise. Hallelujah. Come on, let us pray, but let us pray. Father God, you are good. We worship you this morning. We thank you for our very lives, God. We thank you for allowing us to wake on this morning and, and start us on our way, Lord. We thank you for activity of our limbs. God, we thank you for the ability on our own two feet to walk into your house of worship, God. Now, we ask right now, God, that you would remove all agendas, God, and that you would just have your way in this place. God, have your way, God. We anoint every pew. We anoint every pew. So everyone who will walk into this building, everyone who's under the sound of my voice, God, that you would just open our hearts and our minds and begin to minister to us this morning, God. Allow us to affect this church so that we can affect this city, so that we can affect this nation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, give God a hand. Praise. Hallelujah. This song says hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Come on, put your hands on it. Hey! Come on, sit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Come on, you can say it. Hallelujah. Come 
Come on, say it again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give him the highest You're praise. Worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Sing it one more time. Hallelujah. This part it says, I lift my hands. I, lift my hands. I, praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I bow my head. I, bow my head. I honor you, Lord. I honor you, Come on, Lord. let's say it again. I lift my hands. I, lift my hands. I praise you, Lord. I, praise you, Lord. I, bow my head. I bow my head. I honor you, Lord. I honor oh, you, Lord. Come on, say it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Come on, let's say it again. I lift my hands. I lift my hands. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I bow my head. I bow my head. I honor you, Lord. I honor you, Lord. Come on, I lift my hands. I praise you, Lord. Oh, I bow my head. I honor you, Lord. Come on, can we take it up? Oh, hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Come on, hallelujah. You're worthy to be Now, come on, begin to get a praise on your lips. Just begin to think about everything that he's done for you. How he woke you up this morning and put breath in your body. How he put food on your table. Come on. He's worthy of your praise. He's worthy of your worship. Come on, give it all to him this morning. Don't hold back. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you're worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we live. Lord, we live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you're worthy. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift. Lord, we lift you Now put your hands up. Hey. Now come on, say it. Lord, we lift you up. Lord, we lift you up. Nobody loves. 
Hallelujah. Put your Hallelujah. hands together Hallelujah. and bless his name. Worthy, God. Oh, come Hallelujah. on. Don't get tired yet. We bless you in this Don't place, get tired God. yet. Hallelujah. Amen. How many really love him? Hallelujah. How many love really you, love him? I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Love you, Lord. We love you. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, God. We just worship you. We worship you. Yes, God. We worship you because... We love you because you first loved us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Your will be done. Your will be done. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me. Mm, thank you, Lord. In such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, can you help me say it? I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me. Because Come on, think about it. Think about it. In such a special way. In such a special way. That's why I praise you. Oh, I lift you up. I lift you up. And I'm at Say it again. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care because for me. You care for me. Such a special way. Jesus, in, because in such a that's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, somebody say it again. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I adore your name. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me in ways that I didn't even know you could. Come on. In such a special Hey, that's why I lift you up. Come on, if you love him, if you love him, lift him up, lift him up. Hallelujah, God. We love you today. We love you today. We love you today, God. Hallelujah, because you're worthy. Hallelujah, because you're worthy. Hallelujah, because there's no one like you. Hallelujah. Your glory fill this place, God. We love you, God. We love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why I praise you. Mm. And I lift you up. And I magnify your name. Because my heart is filled with praise. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. Not just because of what you've done, because you've done so much. You've done so much. But because of who you are. Because you're the King of Kings, Lord. And you're the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Come on, let us pray. Father, we love you. We love you. We love you. And we bless your name this morning. We thank you for this moment. God, we thank you for this moment. And although we're moving on in this service, God, our prayer is that you would have your way. That you would have your way, God. This service is not about program or agenda. So that you can speak to our hearts. And have your way in this place, God. So, God, we pray that you were open hearts, open minds. Allow your spirit to fill this place. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. It is that time in our service where the intercessors will come and take us to the next level. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Glory to our King. Glory to our King. Father, we just thank you this morning. We bless you, Lord. Father, we appear before you this morning just as we are, O oh God. Father, we have come, O oh God, to consecrate ourselves, O oh God, before you. Father, if we regard iniquity in our hearts, O oh God, you will not hear us. Therefore, we have come, Father, Lord, to confess, O oh God, unto you, O oh Lord. All our weaknesses help the Father, Lord. Father, this morning, help the Father. We just, O oh God, confess our sins unto you, O oh God. Whatsoever we have done, knowingly and unknowingly, help the Father. That cannot glorify your name, O oh God. Father, Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon your children, O oh God. Father, we bless your name this morning. We come, O oh God, to praise you this morning. We come this morning, O oh God, to exalt your holy name. You are the great and awesome God. You are the covenant-keeping God. We bless you this morning. We honor you, Father. We give you all the praise, O oh God. Father, we come this morning with faith in our hearts, O oh God. For it is written in your word that without faith no one can please you, O oh God. Father, it is impossible to please you, Heavenly Father. Father, we have come diligently unto you, O oh God. Heavenly Father, you are the God that answers prayer. We want to thank you this morning for answering our prayer. Every prayer that we have made in this sanctuary, O oh God. Father, we thank you for answering them, Heavenly Father. We bless your name for perfecting, O oh God, every prayer in the name of Jesus. We bless you this morning. We give you praise, O oh God. We thank you, Heavenly Father. As our prayer go up unto you, O oh God. Your blessing come down unto us, Father. We just thank you and bless your name, O oh God. As we praise your name, Heavenly Father, the walls of Jericho fall before us. Our Every mountain that stands before us, they fall in the name of Jesus. Every perpetual hill, O oh God, fall before us in the mighty name of Jesus. Everlasting mountains scatter before us in the name of Jesus. Chains are broken as we praise your holy name, O oh God. Father, we thank you this morning. We bless you, O oh God. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. This morning, right now, Father, we commit this service unto you, O oh God. Father, let the Holy Spirit take preeminent, O oh God. Let your Holy Spirit take preeminent help the Father. Father, we pray, O oh God, for the men of God, O oh God. The one you have given your word for your children this morning, help the Father. Even as he come on this pulpit, O oh God, this morning. Fill him, O God, with your word, O God. Cause him to speak, O God, with free calls, Heavenly Father. Let him speak your word with boldness and with power, Heavenly Father. 
Father, let, O oh God, the enemy fall at his word this morning. Even as Jesus said, I saw Satan falling at like lightning from heaven. Father, all everything today in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you this morning. We honor you this morning. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. Thank you, Heavenly Father, our, for our brethren, O oh God, that we have prayed for, O oh Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have perfected those prayers. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for restoration in their heart, O oh Lord. We bless your name for the peace of mind, Heavenly Father. We honor you this morning. We give you praise. We give you adoration, Lord. Father, have your will in us, O oh God. Have your will in us, Heavenly Father. Father, help us. thing that we do not know. Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, show yourself strong, O God, this morning. Show yourself strong this morning, Heavenly Father. Maybe as we go in your presence, O God. Heavenly Father, let our enemies scatter before us, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you this morning. We honor you this morning. We glorify you. We magnify your need this morning. Father, we pray right now for every ministration, O God. Every aspect of this service, oh God, we commit it to you, Heavenly Father. That the Holy Spirit, oh God, will take control right now. Fill this place with your glory, oh God. Let somebody go home this morning, oh God, and return with testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. We give you praise. Yes. In Jesus' precious name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Arabake ya urabake ya urababan sea. Yes, 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 God. Have your way, God. I feel to go and pray in Spanish this morning. We don't usually do that, but I don't know who might be connected to a live stream. And I want to pray for you today. Amante Dios y Padre Todopoderoso. Ante tu presencia, Jehová, estoy en esta mañana, Señor. Y yo te presento, Dios de los cielos, esa persona o estas personas, Padre, que están conectadas en esta mañana, Señor. Yo te pido, Dios de misericordia, que tú obres conforme a la necesidad de tu pueblo, Señor. Yo te pido, Maestro, que tú toques cada vida, Señor, en esta mañana. Que seas tú, Dios de los cielos, sanando las heridas, Señor. Que seas tú restaurando la vida al enfermo, Dios de misericordia. Oh, rabaqueya y rabaquei, rababán sea. Padre, que seas tú, Señor, sanando en esta mañana, Dios de los cielos. Padre, toca, Señor, a aquellos que están enfermos, Maestro. Padre, imparte sanidad en esta mañana, Señor. Cuando Jesucristo fue levantado al cielo... Él nos dejó al Espíritu Santo para que fuera nuestro consejero, para que fuera nuestro guía, para que fuera nuestro sanador. Oh, rabacanda y rabaque, rababancea. Y en esta mañana, Padre, yo te presento, Señor, estas vidas, Dios de los cielos. Padre, yo te pido que tú seas sanando, Dios mío, toda enfermedad. Que tú seas, Señor, quitando todo espíritu de depresión en esta mañana. Yo ato y reprendo todo espíritu de depresión. Toda aquella traba del enemigo que venga en contra tuya, yo la reprendo en esta mañana. Porque dice la palabra que todo lo que atemos en la tierra será atado en el cielo. Y todo lo que pidamos en el nombre de Jesucristo será hecho por la palabra divina de nuestro Señor. Y en esta mañana yo te digo a ti, ten fe, confía, confía en Dios. Y entrégale tu vida a Jesucristo para que tú veas los milagros que Dios puede hacer en tu vida. Arrabacanda o rabaqueo, rababancea. En el nombre poderoso de Jesús. Gracias, Señor. Glory to God. Aleluya. Aleluya. Uh, rabaqueya y rabaqueo, rababancea. 
Glory to God. Glory to God. I want to uh, let you know that even though we have prayed already today, if you still need prayer, if you have any prayer request, please add in the comments your prayer request and somebody will be praying for you this morning. Glory to God. I want to say welcome to everybody, to all of those that are here in the house and those that are connected through the live stream. Welcome in the name of my bishop and the head pastor of this church, Bishop Jim Logan and his beautiful wife, Lady Cece Logan. We say welcome and we are happy to have you here with us. We are located in the 2925 East Independent Boulevard in Charlotte, North Carolina. Our services start promptly every Sunday at 10 a.m., but we are open for prayer since 9.30. You are welcome to come and pray with us, and then you can stay for the service so you can worship and receive word every Sunday. Glory to God. Buenos días, te doy la más cordial bienvenida en esta hermosa mañana de parte de mi pastor, Bishop Jim Logan, y de su esposa, Lady Cici Logan. Estamos localizados en el 2925 de la East Independent Boulevard en Charlotte, Carolina del Norte. Nuestros servicios comienzan cada mañana en los domingos a las 10 de la mañana y abrimos para oración desde las 9.30. Eres bienvenido a venir orar y luego recibir palabra aquí con nosotros cada domingo. Si estás en el área de Charlotte y sus áreas limítrofes y no tienes una iglesia donde congregarte, te invitemos a que vengas aquí, te recibiremos con los brazos abiertos. Tenemos también servicio los miércoles a mitad de semana, servicio de estudio bíblico. Estamos estudiando sobre el tabernáculo y si quieres ver los estudios anteriores en referencia al tabernáculo, puedes verlo tanto en la página de Facebook de Kingdom Fellowship Christian Center o en la página de YouTube de nuestro pastor Bishop Jim Logan. Y allí podrás ver todos los estudios relacionados al tabernáculo. Comenzamos los miércoles a las 7 de la noche. Te puedes conectar en línea y si no, puedes ver todos los replays durante la semana. Gracias y que Dios te bendiga. Thank you, Minister Ruth. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this Pentecost Sunday. I'm so happy to see all of you in the house, um, especially my stepdaughter over there from Louisiana. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> and now for the upcoming events, children's ministry, volunteers needed, equipping King's kids for the future through word, music, and fun every Sunday morning. Our service times are 10 a.m. Sunday, 7 p.m. Wednesdays, and we are located at 2925 East Independence Boulevard, Charlotte, North Carolina. If you're unable to join us in the sanctuary, please join us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Now for the Women's Bible Study. U version Bible app. Search and friend CC253 Logan to be added to the list. Hosted by Minister Ruth Tomlin and Lady CC Logan. Amen. Get your KFCC decal today. For a donation of $3, you may see one of the deacons in the sanctuary. June week of prayer. Monday, June 14th through Sunday, June 20. If you missed the live stream, please find and replay on YouTube at Bishop Jim Logan. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Amen. Thank you so much for your attention on this day. Amen. <laughs>
Well, good morning, everyone. Oh, that was kind of weak. Good morning, everyone. Amen. Can you smile just a little bit? This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Can you stand on your feet and give God some praise? Let's worship and adore his name. For the Lord our God is mighty. He is awesome. And we bless his holy name. This is the day that we commemorate the gifting of the Holy Spirit. They were gathered together all in one place they were on the same page they had been praying for 10 days and suddenly like the sound of a rushing wind the holy spirit fell in that room in cloven tongues of fire and they began to declare the wonders of god in all of these various languages so that everyone that was there in that open town place could understand the gospel of jesus christ amen what god confused at the tower of babel he brought it back together in the gifting of his spirit and we bless god for that so that's why we're in red today that's why we're rejoicing today because we're here here by virtue of the Holy Spirit. We're able to worship by virtue of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I don't understand people who are Holy Ghost shy. Amen. We can't do anything except the Holy Spirit empower us and we bless his holy name. So if you're happy to be in the presence of God today, clap your hands and give God some praise like you are enjoying his presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We bless his wonderful name. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Now, while you are yet standing, I know we did it at the beginning of the service, but some others have come in since we started. If you would just look around the worship center and wave at somebody, if they're near you, go ahead, bump fists or touch elbows. Let's greet one another and welcome them into the house of the Lord. We bless God for this. We have come to worship and adore him. Amen. 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 And he's worthy to receive our worship. He's worthy to receive our praise. Amen. God bless you. Listen, while you're standing, I want you to do something for me. Amen. This past week on Thursday, we, we have two octogenarians in our congregation. Dad Mitchell turned 84 last month. My father, Dad Logan, turned 84 this past Thursday. If you would go ahead and put him up on the screen. I, they're probably not watching the live stream. Go ahead and put them up there, Deacon. Amen. The, the picture that's on the slide, just click on it. It should come up. Amen. Is it not coming up? After my hard work, it's not coming up. There we go. Amen. Amen. Dad turned 84 years old. This is what I want you to do. Could everybody on the count of three just shout, Happy birthday, Dad? One, two, three. Happy birthday. Amen. Amen. They may watch this later on YouTube, but when they do, they'll be he'll be surprised and he'll be blessed when he sees that. They're up in the mountains of Western Maryland, but they are yet a part of us, and we bless God for them. Amen. Thank you so much for doing that for me. Amen. I am his namesake. That's our dad, and we bless God for him. Amen. You, you know what? You never know how long you'll have your parents with you. Amen. The Bible says to honor your mother and your father all the days of your life that you may live long in the land. Amen. And so we thank God for him. Doesn't he look good? He don't look like he's 84. Amen. And we bless God. Amen. Amen. Listen, we have some things that are going on. Uh, the first Sunday in June, what's Pastor Wilder's, the name of his church? You know, God's glory. Uh, on Sunday, June 6th, we are going to be worshiping in the afternoon immediately after our service with Bishop Wilder. Now, you all met Bishop Wilder. He came and preached for us while we were in Liberia, if you remember that. 
Bishop Antonio Wilder. They worship at 1230. And they are going to be celebrating their church anniversary. And they have asked me to come and preach. Now, I know after you've had service that you might only want to go get something to eat. But if you count it not robbery, I would be blessed to have you join Lady Cece and I as we go and worship and celebrate with them. Throughout this pandemic, we've not gone anywhere. <laughs> Amen. But now that things are beginning to open back up and lift up, God is opening opportunities for ministry, and we want to be collegial. Amen. Amen. So we'll give you more information next Sunday uh, as we, and I, I hope you'll be here because I, I, I recognize that next Sunday is Memorial Day weekend. Uh, but if you're here, we hope that you will be here. Uh, we'll give you that information. Amen. Amen. And so thank you. You, you may be seated. It's offering time. It's offering time. I said it's offering time. Amen. Amen. I want to invite you to give today. Amen. God has been good to us. Has God been good to anybody? Amen. Glory to God. So I, I want to in, encourage you. Listen, while we were starting worship, a nephew from mine in, of mine in Germany uh, called me. I couldn't answer the phone, so I'm sitting here trying to tell him we're live right now on Facebook. Hopefully, he'll he'll find us. Amen. Uh, I, I believe we're our hashtag is uh, uh, ampersand KFCC. Is in that right? Okay. Amen. All right. Whether you're tithing today or you're just bringing an offering, we have provided you multiple ways that you can give uh, unto the Lord today. We have use of the Givelify app. We are listed in Givelify as Kingdom Fellowship Christian Center. Be sure that you choose the right one, Kingdom Fellowship Christian Center, Charlotte, North Carolina, or you can give through the PayPal Secure Portal. We are listed there the same way, Kingdom Fellowship Christian Center, Charlotte, North Carolina. Or if you use Cash App, we are listed as dollar sign Kingdom Fellows. That's dollar sign Kingdom Fellows. Those of you who are in the house, if you did not receive an envelope, just raise your hands. And our wonderful PMT on duty today will be sure to bring you an envelope so you can give as unto the Lord. We thank God for the privilege of giving, for the opportunity of giving, and so I would encourage you to give liberally. Let me say how grateful I am for how faithful you have been in your giving. You know, there are a lot of churches that closed down during the pandemic that will never open up again because they did not have faithful members that were giving faithfully and enabled them to continue on. But you have been faithful. And for that, I am exceedingly grateful. You, are in, you have enabled us to do some things that we were not able even to do before. But God has been good to us. I want to encourage you in your giving because God has greater things in store for us. I said God has greater things in store for us. How many of you believe that? Amen. Amen. And so I want to thank you but encourage you also to continue giving as unto the Lord. Amen. So if you're in the house, you may now come with your gifts and bring them. Deacon uh, Frank is coming with the basket. And as he comes, uh, just come on and bring your tithes and your offerings. Those of you who are online watching us, I release you now to give and to give as unto the Lord. You can't beat God when it comes to giving, no matter how hard you try. Come on, let's give unto the Lord. To our God, everyone of worship is one of God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to our glory, hallelujah to every praise. Every 
Thank you so much for your giving. Would you now receive our praise and worship team as they come to prepare us for the word today? Amen. Amen. Our God is so good. Sing this song just because of who you are. Yes, amen. There's none like you. And so we just want to lift up this, this song of worship to our God.
morning, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. You are so worthy to be praised, oh God. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you, God. Receive our worship this morning, God. Father, we worship you in spirit and in truth, oh God. We are so grateful. God bless you. you. may be seated in the presence of a living and awesome God. Thank you so much, praise and worship team. Thank you, Brother Bradford. We thank God for each of you. Amen. I thank God for their dedication. Amen. It's not easy to stand up here and lead worship as they do week after week. I'm grateful for them. Amen. And let me say that if you have the gift of song, amen, and you're sitting on that gift, I command you to get up off of it and come and offer it unto the Lord. Amen. God hath need of it. Amen. And we bless God for you. Uh, minister, I'm going to ask you to go to the organ for a minute. I don't know if you know this, this little song. I, I'm going to stretch you today because I'm, I'm going to lower you into some deep teaching on the Holy Spirit. I, I don't often address a particular day in the liturgical calendar. But with everything that has been going on and everything that the Lord has been giving me week after week to give to you, it has made it even more apparent why you need why I need the Holy Spirit. And so I'm going to take us into some deep teaching today. I'm going to be running scripture. You're going to have to spin quickly to keep up with me. But also recognize that I, I cannot do this as simply an academic pursuit. And so I need the Holy Spirit to really empower me today. There's this little song that says, come Holy Spirit, I need you. Come Holy Spirit, I pray. Come in your strength and your power. Come in your own special way. Are you familiar with that? It goes like this. Come Holy Spirit, I need you. Come Holy Spirit, I pray. Come in your strength and your power. Come in your own special way. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, Holy Spirit, I pray. Come, Holy Spirit. I pray. Come in your strength and your power. Come in your strength and 
and your power. Oh, come in your own special way. Come like a spring in the desert. Come like a spring in the desert. Come to the weary of soul. Come to the weary of soul. Lord, as strength to my weakness. Lord, as strength to my weakness. Touch me and make me whole. Touch me and make me whole. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, Holy Spirit, I pray. Holy Spirit, I pray. Come in your strength and your power, oh, come in your own special way. There's one more verse I want to sing here. It says, come like a spring in the desert. Come to the withered of soul. Come to the withered of soul. Lord, let your sweet healing power, Lord, let your sweet healing power touch me and make me whole. Touch me and make me whole. Come on, let's take it home. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, Holy Spirit, I pray. Come, Holy Spirit, I pray. Come in your strength and your power. Oh, come, come in your own special way. Come. In your own special way. What will become apparent as we preach and teach today is that we can do nothing apart from the Holy Spirit. And any time that we try to do it in our own strength and power, though it may produce some good results, it will never produce optimum results because we are limited, but God is limitless. How many of you know that to be true today? And so will you pray with me today as I preach and break this word? I want you to stand to your feet as we read a couple presenting texts today as we get started. First from the Gospel of John in the 14th chapter. And then we will move into the book of Acts just to the 33rd verse, chapter 2. Hallelujah. And we bless God for today. So John chapter 14, verses 16 through 26. This is Jesus speaking. And he says to his disciples, I will ask the Father. And he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. After a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you will, also, you will live also. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father. 
and I will love him and will disclose myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, what then has happened that you are going to disclose yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him and we will come to him and make our abode with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And, uh, he who does not love me does not keep my words my words and the word which you hear is not mine but the father's who sent me these things I have spoken to you while abiding with you but the helper the Holy Spirit whom the father will send in my name he will teach you all things and will and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you and then in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 33, Dr. Luke writing, he writes of Peter in his message, Therefore, having been exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured forth this which you both see and you hear. Father, we thank you that you are with us. We can do nothing without you. So stand up in us strongly, I pray, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. you. may be seated. I want to talk about today the spirit at work in us, the spirit at work in us. You might want to take some notes today uh, to help you. I know our women have been studying the Holy Spirit, and uh, Lady Cece has been doing an excellent job of teaching I, I know this be, because of her sharing with me and discussing certain things. And, uh, but on this Pentecost Sunday, I want to enter into this discussion by helping us to under, understand even more fully what it is that we understand about the Holy Spirit. So let me start this way. The, 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 the promised gift of the Holy Spirit is something that came to us over the course of time. Remember, the, the Old Testament is filled with shipes, uh, types and shadows of things to come. And so when we look into the Old Testament, into the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah prophesied the advent of Jesus. And he told us that a virgin would be with child and that this virgin would bear a son, and then he said that his name would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Forty days past the resurrection, Jesus ascended into heaven, and after he ascended, we understand that he is physically no longer with us. But 10 days later, the Holy Spirit would be given to the ecclesia, to the church, to the gathering of the called out ones, and would be given to them in a dramatic fashion. That's what we call the day of Pentecost. And suddenly, God is with us again in the Holy Spirit. So calling his name Emmanuel, God with us, God is with us right now by his Holy Spirit. Now, most believers who are not Pentecostal or charismatic tend to have very distorted ideas about the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. There are many who are living well beneath their privilege as the people of God, simply because they want nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. They want nothing to do with the Holy Spirit most times because they have experienced abuses of the Holy Spirit from those who operate supposedly in the Spirit. 
Uh, then there are others who mistakenly believe, and some of them are in the Pentecostal and charismatic camps, who mistakenly believe that the role of the Holy Spirit is to give us spiritual goosebumps. That the role of the Holy Spirit is to excite us so that we run and jump and fall out and speak in tongues and lay hands and everything else. Or that the uh, role of the Holy Spirit is simply to endow us with gifts. Now, all those things are well and good, and we believe in all those things. We embrace the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, those gifts are in operation in this house. But if you really want to understand and to discover what the role of the Spirit truly is, you need look no further than to Jesus himself. What did Jesus tell us? Well, first of all, in John chapter 14, verse 16, I'm going to work, I'm going to work my deacon hard today. Uh, John chapter 14, verse 16, and we, we read that verse. Uh, Jesus said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another, what? Helper. So the Holy Spirit, Jesus called a helper. John 15, 26 we see in yet the next chapter, that should be the very next slide, uh, John 15, 26, when the helper, he calls him again, when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father. Uh, so he calls him the helper. In John chapter 14, verse 17, is the first time that Jesus calls him the spirit of truth. And from the last slide, you see in chapter 15, he calls him again, the spirit of truth. Mm -hmm. In John 16, verses 7 through 8, he now begins to tell us what the Holy Spirit will do. What is it that the helper will do? And he says this, uh, but I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Now look at what his role is. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. He will convict the world of sin, righteousness, and and judgment. In that same chapter, down in verse 13, he is called the Spirit of Truth. And this is what he says the Spirit of Truth will do. He will guide you into all the truth. How much of the truth is he going to guide us into? He's going to guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. Mm. This is significant to me because far too many of us are seeking to yank the cover off of situations and off of things that we don't really know what is going on and we think that we have the resources to discover and oftentimes we operate in innuendo if not operating in innuendo, then we operate in partial truth. But the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth, will guide you into all. Y'all not going to help me today. You, you see, if we're following the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit, listen to me, somebody. There's some things that we would have never fallen into because the spirit of truth would have been guiding us. Amen. Because people can dress up things. They can make things look good. They can make themselves look good. And oftentimes, if it's what we are looking for, they'll make it look what we're look like what we're looking for. And what we have to understand is that the spirit of truth can go beneath and beyond what we see. Come on, somebody. You can dress anybody up and make them look good. But the spirit of truth will show you things that you cannot see for yourself. Amen. And so he's your helper, but he's also the spirit of truth. 
So that's what Jesus says about the Holy Spirit. It's not until, Sister Jackie, that we get to the day of Pentecost that we begin to discover the ecstatic benefits of life in the Spirit. Amen. Because when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, it comes upon you and it gives you gifts. And some of those gifts may cause you to behave unseemly. The Holy Spirit will begin to do some things in your life. And what the Holy Spirit does in your life may cause you to behave in ways that are not particularly uh, uh, acceptable to some other people's sensibilities. Uh, uh, they'll look at you and say, it don't take all of that. But they don't know what it is that you're contending with. They don't know what it is that you've been through. They don't know what it is that you are facing. Uh, the truth be told, it may take uh, Deacon uh, Angela, it may take all of that and some more. Uh, be, but the, that, that's the ecstatic benefits. But that's not the primary role of the Holy Spirit. That's not the primary work of the Holy Spirit. So what is the work of the Holy Spirit? Somebody ask me. I thought you'd never ask. There are three primary workings of the Holy Spirit. Justification, sanctification, and empowerment. And as a result of those three, I want to suggest a fourth. And the fourth is koinonia or fellowship. Now, I don't want you to get caught up in the terms because each of these terms are critical. And I recognize, Brother Wallace, that the terms I just gave you, are, they get bannered about in the church and most Christians don't even understand what they mean. They'll talk about justification. They'll talk about sanctification, but they don't really understand what they mean. I'm going to help you today. And so the first work of the Holy Spirit is justification. Now, here, here's how we describe justification. Justification is a new birth into the kingdom of God. New birth into the kingdom of God. You see, the kingdom of God is not the same thing as membership in the church. Or y'all going to just look at me. There are a lot of people who become members of churches but have never entered into the kingdom of God because churches have patterns and methods and procedures that are necessary for you to become a member. And oftentimes, those same methods and procedures could be utilized for a social club. But it's different when you are trying to enter into the kingdom of God. John 3.3 3 says this. Jesus speaking to Nicodemus, truly, truly, I say to you, get this, unless one is, unless one is, unless one is, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The only way that you can enter into the kingdom of God is that you must be. You got to be born again. Why is that? It's because Jesus is the only way to the Father. Jesus is the only bridge that exists between a sinful humanity and a holy God. You can try to get to God by good works, but you'll never get there. You can try to get to God uh, through being spiritual. Remember, the devil is spiritual. You'll never get there. 
Jesus is the only way to the Father. That, that's why you can't get there through Buddha. You can't get there through Krishna. You can't get there through Muhammad. You can't get there through any of those other measures. Jesus is the only way to the Father. And so we enter into the kingdom of God through new birth. Uh, but, but how does he bring us this new birth? How is it that we are born again? It happens because we receive faith through Jesus Christ. Look at John chapter 1 verses 12 through 13. But as many as received him, you know, this is one of my favorite verses because folk are always out there, Sister Barbara talking about, well, can't we all just get along? We're all the children of God. Lie. But as many as received him, how many? As many as did what? Received him. In other words, they welcomed him into their life as their Lord and Savior. To as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. Verse 13 says this, who were born, get this, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So this new birth is not a biological birth that happens through uh, insemination and pregnancy. You, you, I'm not trying to be crass. I, I'm trying to tell you something. This, it's not the will of the flesh nor the will of man, but this birth happens by virtue of the will of God. Because when you come to him, he will in no wise cast you out. So the principal work of Jesus, of the Holy Spirit rather, is to give us faith in Jesus Christ. And so now everyone that has born, Sister Donda, has been born again into the kingdom of God. Everyone who has born again into the kingdom of God has the Holy Spirit living in them. Now, listen to me carefully. We serve a triune God. What does that mean? We serve a God in three persons. It's not three separate gods. It's one God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So if you receive Jesus Christ, uh, Brother Jose, as your Lord and Savior, you got a package deal. Because you cannot separate the Trinity. If you separate the Trinity, you're guilty of polytheism. You're guilty of worshiping multiple gods. So when you receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you got God the Father, God the Son, and guess what? God the Holy Spirit. So you, when you came into a relationship, listen, every one of you that thinks that being filled with the Holy Spirit is all about speaking in tongues and, and you are concerned about it because you don't speak in tongues, listen, I pray that you one day will speak in tongues because tongues is something that everyone can do, but guess what? It's something that not everyone will do. Everyone can do it because it's a gift. Amen. God gives gifts. And God gives gifts to whomever he wants. That's a whole other message. Are you all hearing me? So it's not a matter of, of I can't speak in tongues. No, you can speak in tongues. But you may not speak in tongues if you have not received the gift. Are you all here? But you can receive the gift. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is already living in you by virtue of you having entered into the kingdom of God by having been born again. Are, are you all getting this? Okay, so, 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 so everyone who has been born of God has the Holy Spirit living with them. Romans 8 and 9. Don't believe me. Listen to Paul. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. Amen. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 3 says this. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the spirit of God says Jesus is accursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit of God. 
So if you can say in honesty and genuinely that Jesus is Lord, that's evidence that the Spirit of God is dwelling in you. And if the Spirit of God is dwelling in you, you can't curse God. You simply can't do it because the Spirit of God is there to build up your faith in Jesus Christ. So first work of the Holy Spirit is justification. Everybody say justification. That's what's justification? New birth into the kingdom of God. Say it. That's what justification means. New birth into the kingdom of God. But then there's a second work of the Holy Spirit. Are you all with me? I'm going to try real hard to keep this fresh. I don't, I don't want to bore you with this. And I praise God for those of you who are taking notes. The second work of the Holy Spirit is sanctification. Say it. Now, that, that's, that's a word that we've heard a lot in the church. If anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? You can tell them that I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. I got Jesus on my side, and I'm running for my life. I'm running for my See, we, we love to toss around words like sanctification. But we don't really understand sanctification. Now, I, I'm, I'm going to mess with your faith for just a moment. Uh, because what sanctification is, is growing up into Christ, yielding the fruit of the Spirit. That's what sanctification is. Growing up into Christ. Every spiritual super saint, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Because you have not yet arrived. You dare not look down your nose at somebody else because of their station in life. As Paul would say it this way, for such were some of you. Such were some of you. I, I, I know we've got a witness in here that God from somebody, that God has brought you a mighty long way. That when you look over your shoulder down the path over which you have journeyed, you're not the same person today that you used to be. You don't do the same things today that you used to do. You don't say the same things today that you used to say. You don't even think the same things today that you used to think because somewhere along the line you have grown and listen if you have not grown one iota from the day you accepted Christ you need to check your salvation you need to check your justification because if you've been justified then the next work of the Holy Spirit with the Holy Spirit working in you is that you're going to be sanctified Y'all better listen to me. I, 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 I know I'm not yet where I ought to be, but I'm also not where I used to be because God has been sanctifying me. Look at Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. I told you we're going to read some scripture today. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that gra so that grace may increase? May it never be so. How shall we who died to sin still live in it? Uh, or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old self, somebody say my old self. Our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died is freed from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, is never to die again. Death no longer is master over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. For even so, even so consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Now, listen, when I say dead to sin, when Jesus says dead to sin, when Paul is telling us to, to be dead to sin, 
He, he is not saying that we no longer are sinners. We're still sinners. But sin doesn't master us. Sin doesn't characterize us. Come on, somebody. I, I, I'm not living every day trying to, to, to figure out what I'm going to get into. I'm not living every day uh, contemplating all of the things contrary to the word of God that I'm going to allow myself to do. Amen. Is there anybody in here who got up this morning and said, mm, this is a good day. Listen, today I'm going to do this to so-and-so, and I'm going to do that, and you know, while I'm at it, I'm going to do that. Did, did anybody get up like that? No. When, when you got up this morning, your intention was what? To do everything right. Was that your intention? Y'all look at me. Was that in your intention? To do everything right? But you also know when you get ready to go to bed tonight, you've got to do some confessing. Because not only did you not do everything right, you didn't say everything you should have said. Probably said some things you shouldn't have said. You definitely thought some things you shouldn't think. Can, can I put a pin in this just, just, just for a moment? You know, one, one, of the, one of the nagging things about God is that God not only knows what I say, he knows what I think. Now, that ought to frighten the fool out of somebody. Anybody in here know you, you, you got some jacked up thinking from time to time? Oh, y'all going to act holy. Huh? Anybody in here thought some things even today you shouldn't have thought? Hmm? Some impure thoughts. Some unholy thoughts. Some ugly thoughts. Some just plain mean thoughts. Uh, look at them. And God knows our thoughts. Now, here's the interesting thing. The devil doesn't know your thoughts. I, I, I wanted to put a pin in. The devil doesn't know your thoughts. The devil only knows what you put in the atmosphere. Which is why you need to be careful what you verbalize. Because the moment you verbalize it, it's in the atmosphere. Some of us are helping the devil out, Wallace. We're, we're helping him out big time because we voice all of our fears. We voice all of our doubts. We voice all of our concerns. We voice all of our jealousies and envies. We voice all of our anger. And look at somebody and tell them there's some things you need to just keep between you and the Holy Ghost. How many of you know what I'm talking about here? See, the process of sanctification is the process of the old self being put to death and a new self being raised up. Hello. I've got an old self. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about because certain situations, Brother Jose, pop up and you're like, oh God, I thank you I'm saved. Because the old me Y'all no, ain't going to say anything. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The old me would have got them told. The old me would have gone upside their head. The old, anybody know what I'm talking about? The old me. But see, the process of sanctification is that that old self is being crucified. That old self is being put to death. Now, now listen, I'm not giving you permission to operate in your mess, but I will tell you this. Stop being so critical of folks who are still laboring in their old self because you're still laboring in your old self. You might not be in the same place that they are, but you're still. That's why the Bible says that we are to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. I can't talk about you. I got enough stuff on my own. I know you all think Bishop is pretty, he's a pretty good dude. He's about, he, I, I, he's about the closest thing I know to perfection. Lie. It's a lie. Probably a lie that you think that. But and if you don't believe me, talk to my wife. She'll give you a list. Because none of us are perfect. But I'm in the process of becoming. 
God's working on me. Look at somebody and tell them I'm a construction site in progress. Ooh, God. I, I still, I, 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 Sister Jack, I still got scaffolding going up. Come on. The, you can still see the cranes around me lifting material because God is still building. I wish I had some help in here. And, and listen, I don't care how old you have become. Pop, I don't care that you're an octogenarian. God is not finished with you. I don't care how long you've been saved. God is not finished with you. There's still some things he wants to get away from you because he wants to get you to something. And he can't get you to what he wants to bring you to as long as the old self is still master in your life. Come on, look at somebody and tell them, I won't be master to my sin anymore. Now, there's going to be times when you fail. There's going to be times when you fail. How many know I'm right about it? There's going to be times when you fail. But when you fail, what do you do? You confess it. And you repent from it. And you go on. The Bible says a righteous man falls down seven times. But what does he do? He keeps on getting back up again. We can't afford to allow guilt to keep us paralyzed in our sin. So sanctification is the process of putting off the old self so that you can put on the new self. Now, here's how you know that the new self is being put on to you. Because I said growing up into Christ, yielding the fruit of the Spirit. Now, some people want to say, because there are certain texts in the Bible that seem to indicate that, that if you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, that the initial evidence that you've been filled with the Holy Spirit is that you speak in tongues. That is a, a result that does happen. But to me, listen, because I know a lot of devils that can shaba shaba with the best of them. I, I know a lot of demons that can talk in tongues up one side and down the other and just as mean and ornery and nasty as they can be. To me, uh, Minister Bentu, it, the evidence that you have been filled with the Holy Spirit, that your life is sanctified or in the process of being sanctified, is that fruit is growing up in your life. Jesus said that you'll know a tree by the fruit that it bears. Look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Uh, the verse 23 is not up there, but says, and self-control against such things there is no law. There's nine fruit of the Spirit. And you'll know a tree by the fruit it bears. So if you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, you know someone is filled with the Holy Spirit because they got love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control springing up in their life. If those things are not springing up in their life, guess what? They're not that tree because they're not bearing fruit. Are y'all here? And so the fruit of the Spirit, you see, is, is, is an expression. It's evidence that our character is being transformed by the presence of the Holy Spirit in us. When you see the fruit growing up in my life, that's evidence that I'm in the process of being sanctified. How many of you know you could stand to love people better than you do? See, that's a fruit of the Spirit. How many of you know that you could stand to, to, to evidence joy in your life better? That's a fruit of the Spirit. So as you are being sanctified, you are releasing yourself for the Holy Spirit to cause those things to grow up in you. Amen. Amen. P perhaps one of the reasons that you cannot be outwardly exuberant and excited in worship is because you don't have genuine joy. And you need the fruit of the Spirit that fruit of joy to spring up in you. Can, can I throw some scripture at you? Because don't, 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 don't get upset. Sister Barbara, this is not a one-time thing. This process is not a one-time event. That I, So that I come, my testimony is, Mother Mitchell, I have been sanctified. No, I can't say I have been sanctified. I can only say I am being sanctified. Because it's a lifetime progress, a process rather. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Now the Lord is the Spirit, 
And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed, are being transformed, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord the Spirit. So look at somebody and tell them, I'm going from one level of grace to another. I'm going from one level of glory to another. Because that's that process of sanctification. Listen, your life might be ratchet right now, but it doesn't have to stay that way. If you've given yourself to the Lord and you are genuine in that relationship and you're allowing the Holy Spirit to operate in your life, the Holy Spirit will bring transformation in you. Listen, I know whereof I am speaking because there's a lot of transformation the Lord has had to bring in my life and there is yet transformation still to come. Are y'all here? So justification and sanctification these are what we refer to as inward workings of the Holy Spirit. Inward workings of the Holy Spirit because the images that are used to speak about them, uh, they describe the Holy Spirit living in us. So they are inward workings. Justification is an inward working. Sanctification, it's an inward working. But now let me come to what would be considered outward workings. And that is, third thing, empowerment. Everybody say that. Empowerment. Say it again. Empowerment. Now, empowerment is when you receive the Holy Spirit's power for service and witness. See? Minister Bentu, your portfolio is for evangelism. But the only way you can evangelize is that you have to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. The only way I can preach is that you have to be empowered. I have to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. The only way, way praise and worship team you can minister is that you have to be empowered. The only way PMTs you can serve at the gate and not be ugly and mean to the people of God is that you have to be empowered. The only way deacons that you can serve is that you have to be empowered. Ministers, the only way that you, are y'all here? You have to be empowered. So the empowerment comes as a result of receiving the Holy Spirit's power. Somebody say power. The power that we're speaking of here is dunamis, is dynamic power, and it comes for service and for witness. Look at John chapter 14, verse 12. Am I boring you all? Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank, good catch, first lady. She saw my light turn red. It means I was getting ready to lose, lose power in my mic. Glory to God. So look at John chapter 14, verse 12. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to the Father. Can, can you adjust me on this mic? Thank you so much. Uh, this is one of my favorite verses because, you know, this is, this is one of the things that troubles me. Jesus said that I'm, I'm going to do greater works than him. How am I going to do that? It's by the power of the Holy Spirit. Somebody says it's by the power of the Holy Spirit. See, the thing that we need to recognize through the Holy Spirit, Jesus is continuing to operate in the earth realm. He's continuing to operate in the earth realm as prophet, priest, and king. And he's operating in the earth realm through the Holy Spirit in us. Did, did you all get that? See, that's how you can have empowerment. You, God, I wish I, you all could get this. You all sitting there looking at me. But, but, but see, you're living beneath your privilege because you don't recognize that the same thing that was in Jesus is now in you by virtue of the Holy Spirit. Jesus operated as prophet, priest, and king. You operate as prophet, priest, and king. The Holy Spirit empowers you to do that so that you can take authority over your atmosphere. You can take authority over your sphere so that everything around you has to come into conformity with the word of God. 
See, we have bought into the lie of the enemy that we just have to accept certain things. Look at somebody and tell them the devil is a liar. We don't have to accept. I, I am not defeated. I am victorious. I am not overcome. I am overcoming. Come on, somebody. Because I have been empowered by the Holy Spirit. And we have been commissioned with the same mission that Jesus received from the Father. What mission was that? John chapter 20, verse 21, Jesus. Jesus said to his disciples, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. What mission have we been given? We have been sent in the same way that Jesus sent his disciples. What did he send his disciples to do? He sent his disciples to gather. He sent his disciples to draw people. He sent them out into the highways and the byways and said, compel them to come. That same mission has been given to us. Look around you. Look around you. Note all the empty seats. The seats are empty not because we don't have a word. The seats are empty, not because we don't have a worship. The seats are empty, not because we don't have a vision or a mission. The seats are empty because you and I have not done effectively. We have not performed our mission. Oh, y'all not going to like me very much. See, 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 we didn't get saved to sit down in your favorite seat in church and week after week after week. We got saved to be Jesus' hands and his arms and his feet. We got saved to be his mouthpieces. It's that mission. You have to say something in order to draw people into the kingdom. And we're so nice. We're so nice, Minister Ben, too. Somebody we invite to church tells us no, we stop inviting them. You ought to get like a bulldog. When they say no, you become more aggressive, not less aggressive. So that finally they'll come for one reason and one reason only, just to shut you up. I'm going to come to church because I'm so tired of you talking and juking at me every week. You going to come to church this week? No. You know, Sunday's the only day I have all week long to rest and clean my house. Y'all don't like me very much today. See, I've tried to teach you over the course of time that it's not my job to grow this ministry. It's your job. Preachers don't grow ministries. I know we've got superstar preachers. But statistics bear this out. Majority of people that join churches, they do so because they have, were invited by family or friends. Are y'all here? Look at somebody tell them I have a mission. Let's go a little further. Matthew 28. You all know this one. Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. Jesus came and up and spoke to the disciples saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make church members of all nations. Go therefore and make praise team leaders. Go therefore and make Bible study group members. No, it said, go therefore and make disciples of just black folk, of just white folk, of just Asian folk, of just Latino folk. It said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of bishop, baptizing them in the name of a denomination. No, it said, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Verse 20 says, teaching them to observe all I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you a little while. And lo, I am with you today, but not tomorrow. Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. 
You see, the only way we can accomplish and fulfill the mission that has been given to us is through, by, and in the Holy Spirit. And I want you to understand that this work of the Spirit is separate and distinct from justification and sanctification because it pertains to what we need to carry out the mission. Those other things are what's in you. But now because of what's in you, the Spirit comes to empower you so that you can do some things that you never thought you could do before. Minister Bentu, have you ever done a cold call when you're going door, uh, out evangelizing? You know what a cold call is? A cold call is when you go and knock up on somebody's door. You don't know who they are. You don't know who's behind there. That's called a cold call. That's one of the most scary things to do. The, I can remember the first time I ever did it. I stood on, on the sidewalk trying to get my feet to move. This is years and years and years ago. Until I realized that I don't have to do this in my own strength. The Holy Spirit empowers me. Are you all here? I got one more and I'm going to release you. Uh, so, so we have justification. We have sanctification. Those are inward works. But then we have empowerment, which is an outward work. But those three things together produce a fourth work. Here's the fourth work. Koinonia. Say that. Koinonia. Say it. That means fellowship. What this is, is the building and extending of community among the members of the family of God. Okay, let me help you with this. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. They were continually, the they here were the 3,000 that were added to the, their number that day, were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Verse 43, everyone kept feeling a sense of awe, and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. And all those who had believed were together and had all things, had all things, had all things in common. Verse 45, and they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with all as anyone might have need. Day by day, continue with one mind, with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. They were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day those who were being saved. Ooh, there's so much here I, I, there's, that, that I can't even deal with it. But let me try to deal with it in part because the result of the previous three operations of the Holy Spirit is that fellowship is developed between the persons of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and those who have been born again. Amen. Uh, the Holy Spirit, you see, moves us from operating as solely individuals to operating corporately. Okay, you're not getting what I'm saying. You, you, here's the thing I need for you to understand. We need one another. We are stronger together. than we are apart. In fact, one of the ways uh, that we that we get drawn back into the world is when we separate ourselves from the body of Christ. When we separate ourselves, when we cordon off ourselves from the body of Christ, we become easy pickings for the enemy. But when we operate corporately, I recognize I've got somebody who can stand with me. I've got somebody who can pray for me because I'm not by myself. <laughs> I, I can remember years and years ago, back when I was in college, and 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 we were we were at a game, and it was a game with a school that was arch rival and you know those type of really hard rivalries that there sometimes can be fights in the stands and things of that nature and and some of the guys that are with that I was with from my school were particularly obnoxious particularly obnoxious and I can remember some guys from another school uh, came up to me and they said man uh, keep your boys quiet and, and I looked at him there were a couple of them. I, I rose up and I said, they can say whatever they want to say. 
I mean, I was just as bold. Now, you have, to, you have to recognize about your bishop, I don't like to fight. I will run from a fight. But I was bold then. And you know why I was bold? Because I had about 10 to 15 tremendously obnoxious brothers standing behind me. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? You, you, you see, when we operate corporately, the enemy is intimidated by us rather than we being intimidated by the enemy. Because we, there's strength in, oh, God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That's why we've got to break this, this veil of silence that we operate in. Uh, you don't have to tell everybody your business, but you can at least ask the body of Christ, pray for us. You can tell them, we're going through right now. I just, no, you don't need to know what's going on, but I need breakthrough prayer right now because if I don't get a breakthrough, I'm going to break. Am I talking to anybody in here? Because we're part of a body. We're corporately together. And that's what we need. And here's the other thing. we got to learn how to begin to fellowship with like-minded people. We've got to learn how to spend time with other believers. One of the ways that you get drawn into stuff is that you still got yourself surrounded by the same old folk that the Holy Spirit delivered you from. I'm not telling you to hate anybody, but the only way you can change behavior is you got to get away from them. How do you know? I've told you before. You got to learn how to love some folk from a distance. Stay on over there. I'm praying for you. But, but listen, there, there ain't no sense in you thinking that we've got anything in common until you start with serving the one whom I serve genuinely. I wish I had some help in here. You see, you see, that's what fellowship is all about. When, 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 when you get done with church, if you got a little change in your pocket and you haven't cooked at home, rather than you going off by yourself, invite somebody else to break bread with you. Know what they did. Go back to that, that, that scripture verse. Uh, know, know what they did in Acts, the Acts chapter 2, verse 40, 42. Uh, they, they met with each other. <laughs> they did it daily they met daily now I'm not telling you to, to, to meet with the saints of God daily but you're missing out on growth you're missing out on strength when you don't show up when the saints are gathering but you're quick to show up when the ain'ts are gathering yeah, I just said that. You got to learn how to show up when the saints are gathering. It doesn't matter if they're gathering for prayer or they're gathering for a meal. You got to show because there's strength. And the, you, 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 there were, how many were in prayer yesterday morning? Five of us? Yeah. Including me. You know, thank you. Sometimes I don't count. <laughs> There were five of us in prayer. We had such a magnificent time in prayer. We had such a great time in prayer. Lady Cece spent some carpet time. Laid out on the floor. Matter of fact, nobody was laying hands on her. The Holy Spirit was so heavy that, that she started resting in the spirit. Nobody was near. And I'm, I'm reaching out to grab her wrist so she doesn't hit the ground hard. And I was able to hold her just enough before somebody could get there and help her. But after prayer time was over, whew, God caused me to speak some things into the individuals that were there. And when all that was finished, you would think everybody was quick to get in their cars and leave. They stood around talking. Next thing you know, they're talking about, I'm getting ready to go off and do such and such and so and so. Anybody want to come with me? See, because that's what saints do. They spend time with one another. Are, are y'all hearing me? Huh? I, I need for y'all to get this. I know I'm taking a lot of time for this, but I, I need you to get this. This is what Pentecost is about. 
is about. Pentecost is not about running and jumping and falling down. Thank God for all of that. It's about justification, sanctification, empowerment, and fellowship. Look at somebody and tell them, I need you. And you need me. We're all a part of one body. Stand with me. Agree with me. Y'all remember that old song we used to say? You see, see, that's who we are together. That's not just a song. That's who we are. And some of you have got the... Mm, I know some of y'all going to want to call me this week and Bishop... I don't know what you're talking about, but 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 see, I, I'm so serious a, 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 about this. Some of you need to stop playing like you're part of the ecclesia, that you're part of the ecclesia, and start being the ecclesia. Are y'all hearing me? Are you hearing me? Listen, let me tell you something. There's more power in the body of Christ than there can ever be in the world. Ooh, glory to God. Can I talk about the static benefits of the Holy Ghost? Listen, you, 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 can, you can go you can go down the street and around the corner and get you a little something from the ABC store or somebody standing on the corner that's going to give you a sense of euphoria and make you feel good and things like that. But listen, you never experience the high like you can get when you have given yourself over into the Holy Ghost. I, I don't know if I have a witness in here, but I thank God for the Holy Ghost. I thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost. And here's the great thing about it. When I don't know what to do and, and I don't know what to say, I've got the Holy Spirit on my side who is leading and guiding me into all truth. Uh, yeah, I, I, see, I've received baptism and not just water baptism because we uh, have to be baptized with more than just water. Uh, we have to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And I've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. There's some things that I do that I don't even recognize that I can do. There's some things that I say. That's why I've told people on occasion that if I begin to prophesy somebody be, needs to be taking notes about what I prophesy because when it's over Ain't no sense in you coming to me after church is over saying, Bishop, what was it that you said to me? If it was fresh manna out of the oven, I don't even remember what it is because that's how the Holy Spirit moves in your particular life. I wish I had a witness in here. See, that's what this is all about. We have to be the church of Jesus Christ. We will be the church of Jesus Christ, but it will only happen as we operate in and by the Holy Spirit. If you want to see the nations come, we've got to operate in the Holy Spirit. If you want to see the lost be saved, we've got to operate in the Holy Spirit. If you want to see young families come, we've got to operate in the Holy Spirit. If you want to see ministry spring forth, we have to operate in the Holy Spirit. If you want to see music expand and see ministry expand, we've got to operate in the Holy Ghost. I want to challenge you today to step up into a place where you're not coming to, to receive a gift but you're coming to receive empowerment uh, to step up in such a way that you're like yes I've been justified yes I am being sanctified but now I need to be empowered and when you come I want you to come with somebody who's willing to come and stand with you and say you're not in this by yourself I'm your sister I'm your brother I'm going to stand with you and then don't be surprised when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit that you don't just get empowerment and you don't just get to enjoy a, a fellowship but the gifts of the Spirit get implanted into your life am I talking to anybody in here you see it's time that we stop playing church and if I have anything to do it the Lord willing it stops today it stops today did you all get this? Listen, I, I know it's Pentecost Sunday. Those of you who are watching, you may have been hoping that I would preach you happy because it's Pentecost Sunday. Oh, the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Save me, Holy Ghost. 
set me free. I, you know, no, it, it's not about all of that. It's about justification, sanctification, empowerment, and koinonia. How many of you get that today? Did you get that today? Did you get that today? Now listen, if you're watching or if you're here in the room and you have never consciously invited Jesus to come into your life and be the Lord and the Savior of your life, you're lacking justification. And I want to offer you the chance to be justified. If you know you need the saints of God to pray with you because there's still quite a bit of transformation in you that needs to happen. Oh, God, thank you, Holy Ghost. I hear that this is where I, I need to, to pin right now. You're here. You're here in the room or you're watching and you know that there is transformation in your life. Nobody needs to know what the transformation is. But if you know yourself, and please, because I'm bishop and I know some stuff, please don't make me come get you. But if there's transformation in your life that needs to occur, I want you to step out and come up here right now. Because it's not only justification, it's sanctification that you need. Grab hold of somebody and say, walk with me. I got some stuff in me that I need to get out. I've got some attitudes in me I need to get out. I've got some fear in me I need to overcome. Amen. I, I bid you to come today. I bid you to come today. Oh, come on, saints. I don't want you to do this. I don't want you to do this. I don't want you to put me in a place where I have to begin calling you out because of things that I know about different ones of you. I need for you to begin to come. Listen, I, I don't know if my faith is as deep as you're calling us to go. Hey, that means that's transformation that needs to occur. That's sanctification that needs to occur. Everybody's standing to your feet. Everybody's standing to your feet. Standing to your feet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all going to make me do this, aren't you? Ha. Hallelujah. Baby, get your daughter. Get your spiritual daughter. Kaya. Come on, baby. I know. I know. I know. Come on. Somebody else, don't, please don't make me call you out. Please don't make me call you out. You know there's some transformation that needs to happen in your life. Come on. Hallelujah. Ministers, one of you take this baby. You got it? Okay. Glory to God. Amen. Come on. Come on. You know you need to come. You, you, you know that. The Holy Ghost help you to come. You've been justified. Now you need to be sanctified. There's some stuff you need to let go. So that the fruit of the Spirit can begin to spring up in your life. Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Can I tell you? That out of the messes of your life. <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. Out of the messes of your life, God's turning the messes of your life into manure. He's turning it into fertilizer. You know what fertilizer is used for? For making things grow. Who? Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Come here, Jose. Come here, sir. Come here. God's done great things in you, yet there is more he wants to do. There's more he wants to do. 
Minister Satar, come stand with Brother Jose. I want a minister or an elder behind each of these sisters. Thank you, God. Glory to Jesus. And those of you who are in your seats, this is serious business. This is serious business. I don't want you looking. I want you praying. Praying, 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 praying. They get their breakthrough today. They receive the transformation for which they're praying. Hey God, hey God, hey God, hey God. Hallelujah. Come on, Pop. Come on up here. Deacon. Come stand with Pop. Oh God. I'm going to pray in just a moment, but enter in with me for a moment. Say, holy, 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 holy. Yes, holy, Lord God almighty. Our song of praise to Thee, holy, Your whole so holy, merciful and mild. Oh God, in three persons, oh blessed Trinity. Ministers and elders, if you're standing with somebody, begin to pray for them in your prayer language. Use your prayer language and pray for them. Use your prayer language and pray for them. Yeah. Release to the Lord whatever needs to be transformed yet in you. Release it to Him. Today marks the first day. of your advancement. Ah! Oh, God. So, Father, I bless you right now. And as they release this to you, let your transformation power by the power of your Holy Spirit come from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. May there be a release in them now. In the name of Jesus, God, I bless you, and I praise you, and I praise you, 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 glory to your name, glory to your name, hallelujah. Take one more minute and pray for them. Take one more minute and pray for them. Take one more minute and pray for them. Ooh. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Yeah. 
Come, Holy Spirit, yeah. Bless that Trinity, Trinity. something. I feel something breaking. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Who got? Who got? Blow, Holy Spirit. Blow Holy Spirit. Shake on the da 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 Blow Holy Spirit. Ra da 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 because I want to speak into you right now. God revealed something to me yesterday morning in prayer. And I want to say this to each of you. I hear the voice of God saying, are y'all listening? I hear the voice of God saying, if you will be devoted to me. I will put you in the fast lane. On, on the highway, they used to call it the hammer lane. I know we got some folk out there that go slow. But generally that left lane was for those who were going fast. They used the left lane to get around the slower folks. God says, if you will devote yourself to me, I will put you in the fast lane. I'm saying that to you that way because God said to me yesterday to speak to some who were here that you are already in the fast lane. What I'm telling you right now is that, listen to me, things that you have been waiting for God to do in your life, and they've been slow coming. God says, watch. They are getting ready to begin happening in your life with such a pace that you will know you are in the fast lane. And all you have to do is devote yourself to me. Show up. Show up in my presence. Show up in my presence in your house. Show up in my presence on your job. Show up in my presence whenever the church is open. And you can get, show up. Because every time you show up, I'm going to show out. I'm going to show for ah, I'm going to show for signs, wonders and miracles. And the greatest miracle that I'm working on your behalf is your transformed life. Takai, turn and look at me. Turn and look at me, baby. Turn and look at me, baby. I hear the Lord saying that there are people who want to cancel you because of things that you have said, you have written, 
and you have done. But I hear the voice of the Lord saying, you're mine. And I refuse to share you with anybody. And if you devote yourself to me, everything, how many things? That you have dreamt of doing and that God would do in you. Heard God promise he would do. Because you've been in church your whole life. God says, watch and see if it doesn't begin to happen and happen quickly. I hear the voice saying, I don't know who this is for. I'm getting ready to confound everyone who has spoken against you. I'm getting ready to turn around every word that was spoken telling you what you could not do or what you could not become. In fact, thank you, Holy Ghost. In fact, I curse it right now. I render it null and void in the name of Jesus. I'm, I'm, I know sometimes... Your husband has to work on Sundays. But on those days, you know, he has to work. Call one of the saints of God. Ask him, can you swing by and pick me up? Because the Lord hath need of you. Ooh. Wallace, come here. Come, come here. Come here. My brother. My brother with the same birthday. We got, I didn't say nothing about it. I didn't say nothing because I don't want to mess up whatever y'all have planned. But this brother and I, we share a birthday. And our birthday's coming up. Was it Wednesday? Thursday. Yep. Wednesday. Wednesday. Lord, you don't know when your birthday is. Lord Jesus. Yeah, you can celebrate yours on Thursday. I'm going to celebrate mine on Wednesday. <laughs> I, want you, I want you to know something. I've been praying for you that God would give you what you need to supply your temporal needs and more so and leave you open so that you can serve the Lord fully and completely as you want to. I decree it to be so. Job said if I decree a thing it shall be established. I decree that God is opening a door for you and in not a few days that door will open. Don't be surprised when a door opens for you and don't wonder if this is from God or not. Mm. God's going to open a door for you and when he opens it and it provides everything I just spoke walk through it with joy and gladness. Amen. Amen. Do you receive that? In Jesus name. Because because I, I need some brothers up in here. Jose, I'm like the Marine Corps. I'm looking for a few good men. Because there's a war going on. We got to win this war. And I know I got some former military people in here. Amen. And I bless God for them. Because we've got to begin operating as who we are. The army of the Lord. The army of the Lord. The army of the Lord. Do you all hear this? Do you all receive it? When you receive something, what are you supposed to say? When you receive something, what are you supposed to say? Amen. You know, you're supposed to holler it so the devil knows. Where, do you receive it? Glory to God. God bless you. Now, I didn't lay my hands on any of you today. I had the ministers pray for you that way. But understand the Holy Spirit is touching you today. I want you to receive this right now. Just receive this. Receive this. Receive this. Receive this. The wind of the Holy Ghost is blowing. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now go back to your seats. Go in a different way. Walk in a different way. Go back. Go back rejoicing in Him. Rejoicing in Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to go. I referred to it just a little bit. But you know, it is Pentecost Sunday. I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life. 
I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life. Running for my life. I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life. If it will ask you, what's the matter with me? You can tell them that I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. I've got Jesus on my side, and I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life. I'm I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life. If anyone asks you, what's the matter with me? Come on, you can tell them. You can tell them that I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled. Fire baptized. I've got Jesus on my side, and I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life. How many know that sometimes all you can do is run? You just, I gotta run. Amen. The devil's on your track, but you gotta run. Just run, just run. Everybody stand to your feet. We're going on our way. Thank you so much for all of you who are here today. I want to thank Minister Patricia and Brother Ernest for adorning our sanctuary on this Pentecost Sunday. They drove in from Louisiana. Amen. Brother Ernest brought his daughter with us who just gadgeted. I know the word is graduated, but she just gadgeted. What'd you graduate from, baby? From what? From high school. And, and what are you doing next? Where are you going to college? So I say it one more time. Xavier. Oh, I know about Xavier University. Bless your heart. Now I want you to speak it. What shall you become? Up, oh, glory to God. It shall be so. Glory to God. Come on, y'all, celebrate. Eh? Come on, celebrate. Amen. Takaya is, did you all have graduation yet? She getting ready to graduate. Huh? Now, I already spoke it. I already spoke it. So get ready to step into the next challenge in your life but it's a challenge for your future and I declare you can do it because you're a smart child you're a smart child I know you try to try to fake the funk but you're a smart child D didn't you just about get all A's uh huh mm -hmm. glory to God graduate with honors praise God graduate with honors Praise God. Come on, clap your hands, y'all. Bless God. Amen. We thank God for each of you. Amen. Amen. I know you've got to go back to, to Narlands, Louisiana. Huh? Already completed 20 hours ago. <laughs> Proud dad better tell me the, what, what the real deal is. because, <laughs> Amen. Let, Listen, I want you to, did you enjoy yourself today? Did you enjoy yourself today? Amen. God bless you. Listen, you can come back and see us anytime. All right. She already got the first year done, just graduating from high school. Glory to God. Amen. See, see the acceleration I'm talking about is already happening with you. Yes. At 17, glory to God. Amen. We bless God. Amen. Somebody say it is so. Won't he do it? 
Yeah, amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Brother Bradford, today. We praise God for you. Thank you, praise and worship team. Didn't First Lady do a good job with her solo today? Amen. She did an awesome job. She looked good, too. We're going to have to take a picture today in our red. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, ministers. Praise God for you. Amen. Mothers, you look good. But Mother, did you wear your red back there today? I see you got red earrings on. You didn't get the memo. Uh-huh. But you got a red necklace and red earrings. Amen. Mothers, glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Deacons, thank you. Deacon Tyrone. Our godson back there working the live stream, you know, he just turned 16. Amen. I'm going to have to keep reminding him, though, that he's just 16. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We bless God for him. Amen. Thank you. Sister Allison was on the door today. God bless you. Thank you so very much. Amen. We praise God for you. For, Lady C said, am I forgetting to thank anybody I need to thank? Amen. God bless you. Listen, we're going to have another training soon on our equipment because we need to make sure we have as many people trained on it as we can so that if we're running late or we're not here, nothing stops along the way. Amen. How many of you got a blessing today? Amen. Stand your feet. We're going on our way. Amen. Oh, yes. Uh, those of you who, who committed to pay $20 for the purchase of the additional banners, today's the last day for you to do that. That was extended by two weeks. Now, listen, I already paid mine. I already did mine. Lady Cece, did you already get yours? Did you already pay yours too? Because I paid mine. You paid it today. Amen. Get your 20 in. Amen. Amen. The Bible says don't make a vow that you're not going to fulfill. Amen. So I want to encourage you to do that today. Amen. Glory to God. Sister Jackie, it's good to see you again today. We missed you while you were gone. We know you were on assignment, but it's always good to see you in the house. We praise God for you. Lady Cece's other daughter is here. Alma is here again. We bless God for her. We thank God for her. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody and tell them God's up to something. Amen. To the King eternally, mortal, invisible, the only God. Be glory, majesty, power, dominion, and praise. I bless you with long life. I bless you with health and strength and vitality. I bless you to be a blessing to somebody else today in the name of Jesus. Whatever you do, be it in word or in deed, do it all in the name of Jesus. And so in his name, I bless you today with every spiritual blessing from on high. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Go in peace. My father's children, I love you. And there's not a thing you can do about it. Amen. Glory to God.